What's up everybody? My name's Dustin. If you have access to a CNC plasma cutter or a laser engraver like this one, and you just can't figure out a way to make money with it, well, I've got a cool little method that I can combine these two together to make some really cool projects or products that you can sell. We'll be able to go from this to this to this to this. Let's begin with the plasma cutting. I'll start off with this DXF of a heart and get it ready for my plasma cutter. Of course, you don't need a CNC plasma cutter to follow along. You can just source material pre-cut on the internet pretty easily. If you can get a hold of it, even if you're not cutting the metal yourself, having the DXF of the shape will make your life a lot easier. If it's an easy shape like a square, you can probably just make it yourself in your laser software or CAD software. I'm using my DIY CNC plasma cutter to cut out this heart. If you're interested in how I built it, I have an entire video detailing the process. The link is in the card above and the description below. The metal you see is 8th inch aluminum that I got from my local supplier. Aluminum plasma cuts really well and it's really easy to manipulate. Plus it's lightweight for things that are going to be hung on the wall. Now once you have your shape cut out, pretty much just going to want to paint it. But before you paint it, I do recommend doing one thing and that's going to be sanding and scuffing up this surface. Originally when I was trying this method I wanted to kind of let the shininess of the aluminum shine through to try to make it look kind of cool but what I found was if you don't scuff up this metal the paint does not stick worth a crap and uh, it made a mess I'll just say that uh, when I went to go engrave it basically heated up the layer and then it was just mush and paint getting everywhere and it was pretty bad so a quick uh, scuff up with I don't know what is this 120 grit or something like that work perfectly. Now like I did there, it's probably also worth kind of, you know, sanding down any burrs or anything on the other side and, you know, make sure the edges are nice and smooth. Just in case if someone's handling this, you don't want them to be cut up or anything. Preferably you should do that right when it comes off of your uh, machine if you can. If you're buying these shapes pre-cut, then you probably don't have to do that. As you can see, I kind of went for as consistent as I can. Um, of course, it's not perfectly even, but the whole point is that it's now scuffed up and it has a bit of a texture and the paint's gonna be able to stick to that really well. Now, what I'm also gonna do off camera is spray some solvent. So like some uh, brake cleaner or something, carburetor cleaner, something like that, just to kind of get any of the residue um, from the sanding off of this. So it's as clean as it can possibly be. And then from then on, I'm gonna try to not touch the top surface with my oily hands to promote even better adhesion than I would be getting otherwise. So once you have the surface prepped, the shape is cut and you're happy with how everything looks, you pretty much gotta paint it. Now in my case, I'm gonna be using this Krylon Fusion all-in-one. I didn't really go through any trial and error to try to figure out what works and what doesn't. I just happen to have some of this and it's worked. So I've been getting this. I'm sure other paints are going to work fine as well. This does have primer in it, so that might help. But again, I haven't really experimented. So if you uh, have the ability to experiment, I do recommend that because this isn't the cheapest spray paint in the world, but it works really well for what I do. The key, of course, is to go for light coats and do maybe two or three. That's kind of what I've been going for. You want to try to have a consistent thickness and a fairly thin thickness at that. That way your engraver doesn't have to vaporize a big thick layer of paint. Um, it's just a small layer. I know it's not fully done and it's not even, but that's fine. This is going to be just my first super light layer. And then I'll come back in a couple minutes and add a couple more. So what I found with this is that the most important thing is that you let the paint cure for at least 24 hours, if not longer. I personally go two days, if not three. I found that if you try to engrave this before the paint is fully, fully cured, it starts to melt the paint instead of engraving and vaporizing the paint. And then it just makes a terrible mess, even with the sanding and everything that we've done to prep this piece. So that's the number one thing, let this cure. Do not get in a rush. Do not wait until it's dry to the touch and then immediately put it in, let it dry for as long as you can before you engrave it. For my laser engraver, I use Lightburn. We're gonna start off by importing the heart DXF, which is the same file that I used with the plasma cutter. I'll import this random image, get it roughly positioned, then right click and hit apply mask to image, which will use the DXF to mask the image. If you don't have a proper DXF for your shape, then you should at least create a rectangular bounding box with the shape's overall dimensions to properly position your image. I'll right click and hit adjust image, I have a preset already made specifically for this process. The most important setting is negative image, since we will be removing black and not adding it like we would with wood engravings. 
use the invert display toggle to make the image look correct. Now I've done this long enough to know what the image should look like, because how it looks in this preview does not mean it's going to look that way in the real engraving. This just takes a lot of trial and error to get it right. These are the settings that I start off with, and feel free to use them as a starting point for yourself, but remember your results may vary. The setting I adjust the most is brightness. I'm trying to make sure there's a lot of dots of black still on the face, as that means there's still detail in the image. Again, this is super nuanced and it's just years of experience of doing this that allows me to kind of know what I'm looking for. Now I also have a preset made for the laser settings. Now I have a standard 50 watt Chinese CO2 laser and these are the settings that work for me, though like everything else, I recommend you experiment with your machine. Now unless you want a negative image, which you probably don't, make sure negative image is toggled because remember, we're removing black and not adding black. You can mess with the image mode, though I found that Stucky and Jarvis are the best for this type of engraving. Here you can see me positioning and aligning the machine. I use a thin spoil board under the engraving to create a position for my metal shape. You can see the laser lightly scoring the heart shape before the engraving starts, which was actually the top layer in Lightburn. Before it starts the engraving, I pause the program and position the painted heart. Once the heart's in position, I simply resume the job and let it go. This heart is roughly 10 inches tall, and this engraving took about an hour to complete. And just like that. Now you may have a little bit of residue on the surface that you can just kind of wipe off. Um, just from the kind of the smoke and stuff that comes off of this. But um, the actual paint that's on there should be pretty strong. I've tried to bring it off and you can if you really like scratch at it and you know try to get it off. It's not just gonna you know, like peel off or just come right off like, like nothing. It does take a little bit of uh, effort. That right there can easily sell for you know quite a bit of money. Of course that depends on what your material cost is and what your time cost is for your laser and your plasma cutter if you're like me. I fortunately have a local source for thin 16 gauge or 8, eight inch material like this so that it's uh, decently affordable for me to do something like this but you know your results may vary so. Now like I showed you in the video I actually used the shape the DXF that cut this out on my plasma cutter to size the image in either Photoshop or in Lightburn. The one thing you want to keep an eye on that is that if you don't get this piece perfectly aligned to the file that your laser is running, you may have an issue like this right here where you can actually see the photo didn't quite engrave all the way to the edge. And one way you can avoid that is just basically make the picture that you're using like 1% bigger, half a percent bigger. So the image is always going to be slightly off the edge and it doesn't have to be as critical to get this perfectly aligned. If you have some element in your photo, like an edging or something like that, where that is critical, you'll just want to take a little more care to get it perfectly placed uh, in the laser. Of course, if you're doing a shape that is a very consistent shape for a lot of different orders, you can make some sort of template that you can put in your laser and position it absolute compared to the laser, and that way you can always get everything lined up perfectly. I actually do that with the little business cards that I make. The biggest thing with this, as I said before, is that you want to experiment with the settings used to make the photo look the way that it does. I found that when you're using this method, because the black of the paint is the black of your image and the white is basically the you know light gray silver of the aluminum, you actually get quite a bit of contrast in a picture like this, even with little uh, modification in Lightburn or your Photoshop. Of course, something like this is amazing for gifts and holidays and everything you can think of where someone would want their picture on something like this. And it's not just a print. It's not just a, uh, you know, an image on a piece of paper. It's an image on a piece of metal, you know, which is really cool. This is aluminum, and I found that aluminum does work the best for what I do. Um, I have tried it on steel, stainless steel specifically, and it looked good too. Hopefully there's some of you out there who have a machine or machines like I do and found this useful or inspirational to try to go make something yourself, something that you've never really thought that you could make before. I found that not only having this laser engraver has been you know, a great thing over the last four years that I've had it, but now having a plasma cutter, a CNC plasma cutter that I can make shapes like this 
you know, really opens up what I can do with the laser engraver or anything really. I mean, a plasma cutter is a plasma cutter. You can do all sorts of stuff with that. But as someone who's always tried to make really cool wooden engravings, and that's what my business get lasered, which if you've not checked it out, check out the link in the description, like on Facebook, all that good stuff. Anyway, since I started doing get lasered stuff, I've mainly been just doing wooden engravings and those look amazing, but I've been trying to expand outside of that. So I've been doing things like these metal business cards, which look incredible and you can keep them right in your pocket. Slate engravings, which slate looks incredible and is actually the basis of what I'm doing with this. You know, with most of our wooden engravings, we're doing a light wood color and we're burning the black detail into the wood. Whereas something like this, or with the slate, for example, it's already black and we're taking away black and adding in the white of the image. So my experience with doing some slate and some of the basic metal, uh, painted metal like this, has actually made you know doing this pretty easy. And of course, those of you out there who don't have access to a CNC or a laser or something like that for cutting metal, you can of course just buy pre-cut metal shapes online. They're all over the place. They are kind of expensive, but you know that's the price you have to pay, I guess. So anyway, I'll stop rambling. Hopefully you guys found this useful. And if any of you out there found this useful, let me know. Give this video a like. Comment in the uh, comments down below. If you make anything cool, you know, with the help of this video, please let me know. You know, put in the comments. Um, send me a link. You know, like if there's a contact thing on my website. You can go and message me. Now, for those of you who have been with this YouTube channel for a long time, um, I have some cool news. I am this close to hitting one million channel views, total channel views on my YouTube channel. Now, of course, that doesn't sound like much for, you know, hundreds of thousands of channels out there. They can get that in one video. This is a tiny little YouTube channel. This has basically just been me making videos whenever I feel like it for the last 15 years. So, for those of you who have been around for quite a while, especially when I was early into the 3D printing and everything 10 years ago, um, you guys are, are awesome. You know who you are. And um, that's exciting to hit that milestone. As much as it really doesn't mean much to the channel or to anything, you know, it makes me feel pretty cool that, you know, there's... A, a maximum of a million people who have seen me, which probably a lot less, a lot of you are recurring, but still, it's pretty cool. So I appreciate the support that I get from every single one of you, subscriber or not. Um, you guys watching my video and liking this video and commenting is really uh, what makes me want to keep doing stuff like this, because I'm, I'm going to do stuff like this regardless of whether the camera is on or not. So I really appreciate uh, just the support and the community that's out there. So, so anyway, I'll stop rambling. So until the next video, I'll see you all later.